await uh, passage of the 2024 appropriation bill. Let's get a sense of where the 27 uh, trillion will be spent. Joining us now is uh, Mr. Idris Schreiber, an economist, uh, joining me right here in the studio. Good morning. Uh, good morning Great and to thanks have you. for having me. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm sure you saw the uh, budget breakdown yesterday. You know, that came out yesterday. So we got a glimpse of where some of these spending, you know, will be going to. Uh, talk to me about um, uh, spending, you know, at this time. We've had issues, you know, even at the subnational level. You see a, a state is making X amount and spending almost half of that, you know, for the governor's office. Talk to me. What do you want to see as regards spending with this uh, bill? Uh, is it what do I want to see or what has been released? What, what has, has been, been released and what you want to see? Yeah, what has been released is uh, nothing extraordinary. Is we're still back to the same old regime of defense, getting the lion's share of almost 12% of the budget allocation, infrastructure about 5%, health and social services another 5%, and uh, education about 7.5% 7, 7 uh, uh, of the total allocation. Uh, what we expect to see from uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinimbu, given the fact that uh, he said he wanted to give us renewed hope, is um, likely even more spending, higher amount of allocations or uh, you know monies to be allocated to infrastructure, uh, health, and social services, uh, and other you know fundamentally economic regenerative uh, you know kind of expenditure. Uh, in the last, you know, call it 10 years, from good luck Jonathan's time till now, we've had budget spending uh, in defense. How defensive is Nigeria? How secured is Nigeria? We still have, you know, bandits here and they are kidnapping people. We have certain local governments, certain parts of the country that is still under, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the control of these rascals. When we have a military, we have the police, we have all other paramilitary agencies and security agencies that we have. For how long should we continue to spend so much in securing Nigeria? Maybe so you're what saying, we need you're to saying do, we should cut defense spending. Yeah, maybe what we need to do is to interrogate what are the causes of this insecurity. Probably there is a nexus between poverty and insecurity. Probably if we water the soil, if we empower the masses, we will take out the bandits from the bush, we will take out the Boko Haram from their enclaves and be able to reduce the level of insecurity. Maybe, maybe we need to have a bit of a paradigm shift to tangentially move from just buying arms and ammunition to saying, wait a minute, let me retreat. What do I need to do in order that we can reduce you know, this level of insecurity? Remember, let uh, President Musa Radua, show uh, Omar Musa Radua, of blessed memory, did try that with the Niger Delta militant. I said, guys, let me give you an olive branch. Instead of doing this destruction, why don't I incentivize you? Why don't I make you productive so that, you know, the oil wells, the pipelines, and the environment could be good enough for, uh, you know, for economy to, to strive. What did we witness? Obviously, if Omar Musa Radua didn't implement the amnesty program and the, the follow-up of, you know, what he did to the Niger Delta Milita, we probably wouldn't have had an oil industry today in Nigeria. So what you would like to see in this spending, cut defense spending. Yeah. Where are we taking all that money to? Health, infrastructure, education. I mean, we could do with 5% of, of the budget to maintain the armed forces and other, you know, paramilitary and security agencies and move that money to health, infrastructure, and education. In any case, President Bola Metunembu did say in his speech that there is going to be a new mechanism of funding education. But what we, are seeing, what we are seeing is allocation 
of so much money to education. And when the federal government, remember, the, the national, the subnationals, both the state and the local government, they have areas where they are supposed to concentrate. Why should the center even be spending so much uh, on education when it is supposed to target, at best, the tertiary education? Uh, you know, the secondary schools, the primary schools are supposed to be under the subnationals. So we, we need to look at these things and we need to be careful. Sometimes uh, President Bola Metunubu makes statement and you wonder, is that statement properly, uh, you know, interrogated to exactly know what does he mean? How does he intend to achieve uh, uh, some of those uh, pronouncements? Because I'm looking at the student loans and I'm still trying to wrap my head um, around how that's really going to work, you know, in Nigeria at this point. But um, talk to me now about cost of governance because, you know, I'm, I'm imagining if I was um, in so much debt, you know, at some point I would trim some of my expenditure in some parts that I feel like it's not, you know, productive. What would you like to see when it comes to cutting costs of governance in Nigeria? God will bless you abundantly for, for this question. And amen. I say amen. <laughs> uh, listen, what we expected, and personally what I expected to see, was a budget that is extremely lower in deficit. Because fundamentally there are two, three things that President Bola, Bola Ahmed Tinubu should have considered in producing this budget. Number one, he's removed oil subsidy. And therefore there is massive amount of money coming into the Federation account. Number two, following closely to that, the exchange rate harmonization has made the government to rake in even more Nairas. Number three, what he should have done is not just to be on rhetorics that we want to do to get value for money, but the cost of governance needs to be significantly, massively and rapidly reduced. Without doing so, you are indebted. We are a debtor nation, and yet we are spending so much. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria allows him to have minister from each state, which means 36 ministers. Today we have 48 ministers. Are you really, really serious? You are indebted and you are having robust you know, appointees? The number of special assistants, special advisors are gradually going to be even more than the number of ministers. Where are we going to source the money to sustain this? Even, even, though we need, even though we, we need a, a lot of brains to solve the problems on ground right now. Listen to me. We don't need a lot of brains. Okay. We need egghead, quality materials, two, three, five good guys that can run this system. What are we talking about? You need somebody to run the education. You need somebody to run the budget and planning. You need somebody to be a, a superintendent, a kind of monitoring and evaluation that will make sure that whatever I set out to achieve, I am able to achieve it and not just uh, talking for talking sake. Do we need 110 you know, persons to run this economy? To the best of my knowledge, no. If you have... A country 15, of 200 million people, over 200 million. Listen, with technology, if you leverage on technology and you leverage on quality materials, don't go for quantity. When you are looking for, you know, people that will deliver, you need what? You need just quality materials, egghead, we have quite a number of people trained in the best institutions of the world. Call it Cambridge University, call it Harvard, call it University of Lagos, call it Bayre University, call it Insuka University. You know, we have quality materials, homegrown, that can deliver the best of the very best. And that is why, because we have these quality materials, that is why America, Canada, Europe, Everybody is coming to Nigeria to do what? To steal our talent. If we don't have the talent, will they be employed in Canada?
even this the Japa syndrome that is so much uh, you know discussed in it shows Nigeria. that we have something. It shows we have something. And when you know what the thing you are looking for, Shokoto Ide, you are right. So that that is the the, the, the the issue. So I sincerely believe we don't need too many people. My brother, United States of America has how many population? Two hundred three hundred million. How many ministers do they have? Fifteen? Twenty? How many does how many advisors does uh, uh, you know Biden has? You, you don't need this retina. It's just a job for the boys. They've helped me to win election, so I need to uh, carry them along so that they can and get something. And, and, and that is so costing much. the country for so much. And we can do, and I'm still repeating, we can do with far, far less of the cost we are spending in maintaining and sustaining you know, the governance structure that we have. And, and if we continue at this rate, what do you see? We are doomed. We are doomed. The moment that you are spending on consumption is always higher than you are spending on investment, regenerative investment. You are doomed. And if only you are even spending your income, it's even better. But we are borrowing. You can't spend to, 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 yeah, yes, we are, but that's what we are doing. Right. The federal government is borrowing to pay salaries. Must we carry the quantum of staff we are having? We, we shouldn't, particularly when you can ill afford it. If you are spending your money, it's even better. But we have reached a point where we are borrowing to sustain our ostentatious consumption. So what, what you would like to see is cutting the cost of governance we, we, significantly. 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 Yeah. So much to unpack there. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Idris uh, Schreiber, economist. Uh, join us right here in the studio. It was great having your perspective. And uh, definitely, uh, I hope, you know, going forward, we, we can, you know, cut a significant amount of when it comes to um, government uh, spending at this point. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Cost thank of you, governance. Thank, thank you for having, having me. Thank you.